Hi guys, welcome to today's show, our late night with uh, me. Uh, well, as you may know, this is not a real talk show. It's just uh, me uh, interviewing some friends and talking about what's going on uh, right now. So our topics range from anything that's about COVID or the lockdown or about tech stuff as well. Uh, so just a quick intro uh, for those of you who are new, if you are not familiar with Open Coffee Club KL, Open Coffee Club KL has been a networking event and also an online community for startup entrepreneurs for a long time. Uh, we are one of the earliest uh, startup networking events in KL. And uh, to me, for me, I, I've been a moderator for about eight years now. And I it started with a webcam KL, which used to be one of the earliest uh, startup networking, uh, sorry, startup networking uh, event in KL. But not only for startup, it was a more general community for techies. So anybody involved in the tech scene, the web scene, uh, we were part of webcam KL and Open Coffee Club uh, Open Coffee Club KL became an offshoot, which was more focused on startup entrepreneurs. And that's how I started uh, uh, taking care of this community. And it's been about eight years now. And we've done a lot of interesting things in this community. And uh, now with the lockdown, I've started this uh, chat uh, sessions now. Uh, may not be a daily thing, but I'm trying to keep it as regular as possible so that we can feature a lot of interesting things here. So for today's topic, we have something very interesting. Uh, as you may know, uh, as you may know, the three D printing community has come out in full force, and they are doing a lot of amazing things recently to help our frontliners, you know, fight against COVID nineteen. So to talk about that, I have Mr. Norfais. He's uh, the co-founder of one of the most active three D printing communities in uh, uh, on Facebook right now, our Malaysian three uh, D printers. And uh, let's learn more about what the initiative is all about and what cool interesting things they're doing there uh, so just you know so that all of us can learn uh, you know what's happening in the scene right so i'm gonna invite him in right now all right hey Hi, no can you hear me hey hello everyone yeah welcome welcome thank you thanks thanks for having me so I, i'm assuming uh, you've been very busy printing every day no not really actually uh uh, some of some of the days, but uh, most of the time is basically busy organizing, like connecting people from, um, you know, those people who wants to donate and contribute uh, raw materials, and then I just connect them to um, the person that actually really printing uh, on the very end of the states or the country. So basically, just connecting and uh, you know, organizing. Uh, we where and which uh, the supply needs to go, things like that. So if I right. have free time, then I, I have... Uh, uh, you print as well? I print as well, yes. Uh, if okay. I have free okay, time... Okay, so be, be, before we go into those details, mm. uh, let's go... Uh, let's talk about you, uh, some introduction about you. What's your background? Uh, what have you been up to until the, the MCO started? And then how mm. you got into this whole uh, printing thing? Uh, so uh, I've been in the, uh, in the tech scene uh since uh, so basically i think that the crowd that we are addressing today is basically i think friends of friends so i've been i've been in a local tech since uh, uh back in 2014 uh, so uh, i work with uh my and then uh, superhands vlt labs and uh, later on joined maxis uh and then now i'm with uh, made easy so basically uh, the whole uh, career path of mine, uh, I've been concentrating on doing digital product, uh, precisely on UI UX uh, front end development. So that's what I'm doing lah until right. uh, COVID nineteen uh, hits us, and then uh, I took unpaid leave from Made Easy because um, I think everyone is uh, uh, having you know a very hard time. So uh, I told the founders that I want to take uh, an unpaid leave and then concentrate uh, on my family because my wife is also one of the frontliners and right. I have to attend my two kids because uh, the schools are closed, right? So what to do? Right. Right. They need constant attention. <laughs> so I took an unpaid leave. And then suddenly right. I right. think uh, I need to do something to kill the boredom. It's not, it's not boring or what, just uh, I need to find something that I can contribute. Lah. So uh, right, I think right. uh, 
those people in the country that been affected before us, they have these uh, makers uh, communities running around actually uh, try to contribute what they can do to the to their own frontliners. One of it is uh, using their own 3D printers. So uh, I think at that time, although there are many people actually talking about doing this, but it's actually segregated. So what I've been doing for the past one month, three weeks uh, to be precise, is basically uh, to consolidate everyone into a single group and organize, help help everyone to organize. So so that's, I think, a little bit of me and then how it came through, uh, you know, uh, creating this uh, community of 3D printers. Okay, yeah. and how long have you been a 3D printer? Uh, or how long uh, have you been 3D printing? Uh, almost two and a half years now. Okay. Now, two, okay. two and, and a half years. And, Always and, ha- and what inspired you to start this group, to start printing like medical gear and all that? Is that inspired by something else or is that your own idea? Like what, what kicked off the whole thing? Um, so, so I think, I think it's already been back in my mind, like just that I don't really have the, you know, when you want to do something, you have, you know, suddenly there's an urge, right? So that urge is basically uh, my wife herself uh, telling okay. me that um, uh, they have uh, some lacking in terms of the PPE uh, right. and the supplies are not coming uh, fast enough. So what they did is basically using, uh, you know, plastic bags, uh, makeshift uh, face shields from uh, plastic bottles. So I think, hmm, I think I saw uh, someone back uh, in in states and in in Sweden and in China, they've been because they've been struck by COVID nineteen earlier than us, right? I, and then I think I saw oh actually they some people already been doing this, so why not? Uh, uh, I I I try to uh, bring those idea and implementation to 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 our country as well, and uh, luckily all the documentation are there. Uh, so basically I just uh, uh put everything in sync in one place and call everyone, uh, make a call to action for everyone to actually, hey, let's do this together, you know. That's how it okay. uh, started. Lah. That's the urge, lah, if, 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 I may, yeah, if I may say, yeah. Okay, okay. very interesting. <laughs> so I, I'm going to invite one of our other mutual friends as well, uh, Mark. He's uh, already live right now. Let me add him to the stream. Hey, hey, okay, Mark. Mark. Okay. <laughs> so... Uh, I've known Mark for a, a long time. Uh, we've been, uh, you know, uh, friends uh, for many years, and he's been my go-to 3D printer guy, right? Anything about 3D printing, uh, he's the first guy I message. Uh, he's the first one who, you know, let me play with the 3D printers and uh, and introduce me to the whole scene. Uh, so anything I want to know about 3D printer, I'll ask him. So I'm very, uh, you know, excited to see you guys all coming together as a community and contributing in that sense, right? Not many people would have thought about uh, the whole idea of. 3D printing something to be used in a hospital. See, a lot of my, even my other friends are now really like mind blown, like, oh, we never thought this can be done. But now that the 3D printing community is in, in, in full force, uh, so it's very interesting to see, which is why I decided to invite you guys today so that we can just have a chat. Uh, so more people can know about what you're doing. Uh, and maybe there are more people who will be interested to come and support the initiative as well, uh, if they are not aware of it, right? So Mark, uh, how about the introduction? Introduce yourself. Maybe some people might not know not know you here. Uh, okay, so hi guys. Uh, I'm uh, I'm the uh, admin for three D printing Malaysia. So I've been playing with three D printers since um, twenty twelve, I think. So yeah, so I have my little own studio doing three D printing studios doing uh three D printing stuff. Yeah, so that's why. Uh, so prior to this, also I uh, before I get to know Novice, I started this uh, uh the movement, the three D printing movement. I am actually also working together with uh, Cheng Huat from Indonesia Malaysia. We are also trying to do something else, so, you know, so to, to help out as, as much as we can. Okay, so that's how it all started. I think it's within three days or so, then we just link up with Novice and then uh, things just start to kick off, like, basically. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And uh, so Novice was saying earlier that now he's more busy into coordinating, uh, yeah. not much of printing because he has to run the whole community. So on yep. your side, what, what have you been busy with? Okay, like so a uh, few 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 days ago, I just delivered a batch of uh, inhaler, what is it called, the aero chamber thing to some uh, uni- uh, universe, uh, uh, hospitals to test it out. Uh, 
uh, we're still waiting for some feedbacks from them. And now, uh, just now I have a conference call with uh, some doctors. Uh, they are trying to test up some nasal uh, tests. You know, what is it called? Nasal swaps or swaps. Yeah. Swap. Yeah. 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 So using uh, SLA with bio biocompatible material. So I'm going to print a few for them tomorrow to try it out, like, basically. So to tweak it, yeah. and if the design is not suitable for Malaysians or whatever, we have to try it out. Yeah. Right. So mine is more towards the the more niche kind of thing because I do have specialty materials that are tuned for that kind of uh, biocompatible needs. Yeah. Right. So generally, right, let's uh, talking about the community. How has the response yeah. been from the the maker community with these initiatives? Uh, like from your experience in the last, you know, more than a month or so, right? Yeah. How's so the, actually, how's the response? Yeah. The I think the maker community responded uh by you know just came, came out all the way and start printing stuff. You know, it's like people like say uh Cheng Huat also, you know, just because he has uh, some a lot of contacts and stuff, he start to round up people and start printing. Uh William Evis uh from, and Daryl from uh, STEM Makerspace, they had like 10 printers. They they also start printing a lot of stuff, uh PPEs and stuff. So and and because mine is the 3D Printing Malaysia Facebook group, right? Since the COVID started and since the, the movement has take, uh, has uptake, right? A lot of people started joining the, the group. It's like probably added a thousand people over the past three weeks or so. It's tremendous. I mean, people that maybe previously never contacted with 3D printing before, as I found out, oh, this, this 3D printing can actually help in so many other ways, you know? So they started joining this, the main group and also the, all the subgroups and, you know, all sorts of things just happening. Quite interesting, I would say. Yeah. And how's the response from the the medical fraternity, like the hospitals or the doctors? Uh, how cooperative are they? Are they very happy or are they uh, un unsure about this? Like, you know, what's the general response? Because we see some, you know, from the Facebook posts and all that. Uh, but based on your experience, is all uh, all the doctors out there really happy or are they still unsure about three D printing? What is the response? So far on my side, I don't really con uh, close contact with uh, a lot of other doctors. I only have one or two do do doctors that uh, we test something. So I'm still currently waiting for them to give feedback on the arrow chamber uh, thing. It's not the, it's not that there's two versions of that. One is America is doing the paper folding version, and mine is uh, the the one we are. I'm working working with content innovations uh, uh, on the plastic bottle, mineral water bottle uh, kind uh, inhaler uh, spacer. So they are still testing that. Uh, we haven't get to a live uh, live data yet, basically. So they are still talking about it. And the nasal swap is still under undergo testing also. So basically, on my end, I don't really contact with a lot of other doctors. Uh, maybe Nofias can uh, give more yeah. opinion on this. Yeah. So uh, let's stop. Mm, I think I think the feedback the feedback from doctors. Uh, the, the the items that the community uh churning out one of it is uh, the face shields and then uh the other one uh are the uh, uh ear loop reliever so those things are not really critical in terms of um uh in terms of the the if, if you're in terms of the height i'm not saying that it's not hygienic or what but in terms of uh the waste of it is very low so uh, the feedback that we obtained from the doctors and frontliners what they said about uh, the facial uh, specifically is um they they really like it because they can uh sanitize it or they call it decon decontaminate it by wiping wiping the facial frame with the uh, alcohol swab so that what they've been doing for now uh and then they they like what we've been doing because uh, in comparison with the uh, the DIY uh, facial, which is by using a uh, uh, sponge block and then uh, and and with a string of elastic, those things are one-time use. And if let's say uh, the sponge absorb uh, absorb any moisture from the human body, usually they won't use it again. So it's a one-time use. Uh, and in comparison with with the frame. That been printed by the three printer community is 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 plastic and then in terms of uh, by just looking at it is it can be reusable so to answer your question they really welcome it and then they 
it, it's like the the order keeps coming in even today they keep asking like can you send us uh 50 next week uh, and then another doctor said can you send us more because uh a lot of uh frontliners are also asking for it because usually what with what in in on the field right so if let's say they've been given a frame or face shield usually they bring it home so one face shield uh is 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 with them they bring it home maybe they they sanitize at home and then they bring it again tomorrow to to, to their workplace so that's been that's what uh the real situation uh on the field uh, if, if we are talking about uh, face shield but i i always uh i think the committee itself always uh put an um uh, like a uh like a, you know we, we keep telling the frontliners and the doctors this facial is not really suitable for the usage in an area where the COVID-19 is, uh, the risk of COVID-19 is very high, especially when you are dealing with uh, COVID-19 patient in operation theater or uh, directly face to face. So we don't really recommend using the facial that uh, we've, uh, that the three printer committee uh, printed out because of uh, some of the um, uh, safety concerns. So, uh we 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 always say that oh this this is more like um um like uh mm, multi-purpose facial that actually uh other frontliners can use like uh, the police the uh, the rela and then uh those nurses that are working on the counters so 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 that's what it is in in a field at this moment and then we right. always say that uh the frame when you when you when you think the facial frame is is no longer uh, on its original form. Let's say it's deformed because of the heat, or maybe it got cracked. Uh, just throw it away instead of reusing it again. So, so that's how it is now. For now. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. how how many uh, face shield or any other devices, like in total, that you guys have contributed so far to our frontliners? Uh, uh, an average average ballpark number. Ballpark number, right? I I don't know. Last time I said seven thousand. And then suddenly right. the next day, uh, there's this one group of uh, 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 3D printer and TTS come up with. Oh, actually, we already printed like 900. Then, oh, it's already 8,000. So, so ballpark figure, I think it's around uh, 12,000. But I believe uh, they also that they are uh, they will, at least like at least they, will, they will, it is more than that because I know. There are some uh, there are some subgroups that is actually running on their own, like like uh, Penang Science Cluster, and then also in Sarawak, and also in Sabah they have Kinabalu coders. They also have print uh have been printing uh uh 3D printed gears for P 3D printed PPE gears, and then they have their own numbers. They I think I think altogether there will be more more than the, the figure that I mentioned just now. Maybe Mark knows more about this. <laughs> how, how what was your ballpark figure? Mark? <laughs> I, uh, this one I have to ask Chengkuat, man. This one, this one, yeah, I'm already yeah. sure. <laughs> so, yeah, the, yeah, I think 12,000 12, the, the ballpark. Right, but it, it, it's ongoing, right? I mean, it's continuously printing and delivering, printing and delivering, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay, in mm -hmm. terms of funding, right? So, I've noticed because I've been part of the community as well for a while, although I'm not a 3D printer, I don't have a 3D printer. But, you know, I, I've been part of the 3D printing community here and there because I want to keep up with the trends and what's happening in the community. Uh, so since this printing thing started for the frontliners, I've been observing what's going on. Uh, in terms of funding, I notice there are a lot of people spending their own money to buy all the, the filaments and all that, right? And they're printing and contributing and some groups are raising funds. So how are you guys looking at it? Uh, what kind of support you've received from the public or among the community itself? Uh, or are people just spending too much money on their own to contribute? Uh, any views on that? Uh, share your thoughts. Mark, uh, ask Mark first. <laughs> uh, go ahead, Mark. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, I just an update from uh, Tsinghua is uh, we have around 25k ratios, 25,600 last time. Ah, see, <laughs> more, more than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Good job, guys. So, Good job. Great effort. So, Cheng Huat is uh, he he is the coordinator on multiple stuff. Uh, it's not just facials. Uh, he he coordinate all sorts of different things. Uh, basically, yeah. yeah. So, uh, 
uh, on my end, uh, we just help out as many as we can uh, using, uh, initially we started off with just uh, in-kind donations. We try not to touch any cash donations in, uh, for a start. So because we know it's quite messy and stuff. So we've actually collaborated with Marika uh, to get their coordination, I like say all the stuff like uh, uh, distributions and stuff like that. So we just uh, try to partner up with all the different parties so they can handle that. In terms of filament, it's all pro bono. We, we come up with our own stuff and then we just sprint ourselves until we just, you know, finish. You know, that's it. So uh, obviously there are other parties that are also uh, collecting donations. Uh, some of them, they, they accept their own personal donations to buy stuff or even send filaments to those uh, uh, people to print. They Some of them, they actually offer, hey, I got extra filaments at home. Can I send it to you? And you just print, you know. There's a lot of all these kind of uh, quests. Yeah. But on, uh, on my end, because I don't actively print PPE, uh, Everything else is uh, actually I just use my own uh, my own filaments and also resins to print basically. Right. And on your side, Nervais, how 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 about funding for your community? Uh, so, um, overall, right, frankly speaking, from my point of view, la, uh, I know a lot of uh, a lot of uh, the guys in the community have been uh, chip, chipping in their own uh, pocket money. And then I can I can actually say that the amount of money that uh, that many people who are raising funds, the the amount uh, the accumulated amount is much lesser than uh, the the amount of money uh, the people in the community has been uh, you know coming out from their own pockets lah. Usually, like I know a lot of uh, uh, small timer print print. The three printing farm actually uh, make use of their own stockpile of filament to actually just print, and then uh, like like I know this uh, one print farm in Semenye Selangor, right? They they just print using their own uh, PLA filament stock lah. I think more than uh, thirty kilos already. So one kilos can turn out like <laughs> 70, 70 frames. So times lah. Hmm. How many? <laughs> so um, thousand pieces I guess. Yeah, frame. yeah. And uh, and then and then those people those people unless you ask them then they will tell you oh it's actually coming from my own pocket money this is uh my own way to actually contributing yeah so but but if if you don't ask them you never know lah but I I I know many print farms are doing this so kudos mm. to them um so yeah. so from from day I one see, yeah. yeah yeah from day <laughs> one I I always believe that um uh funding. In any funding in terms of uh, in-kind donation or money, right? Uh, it should go to the logistic uh, spending because logistics is one of the key area. You know how how you you uh, transport all the resources from one place to another. Um, and then uh, if if let's say there there are extra fund, then it should go to the raw materials or or other like printers and whatnot. But um, I always believe from day one, uh, in term of uh, funding, there will be there will be unlikely, you know, less prob less issues uh, in term of you know in term of the community because I know Malaysians are really kind. <laughs> they they just you know, uh, I don't care. I have money. I you know some more. I'm I'm sitting dark at home, not doing nothing. My printer also like been one year not running. Ah, yeah. Now got exactly, <laughs> and the filament cannot last very long, right? So they just ah, okay, like just gonna. Yeah, correct. Just <laughs> okay. So we uh, have a, we have a question from our friend. Yeah. Uh, about <laughs> how is it possible for hospital or local clinic to establish their own three D printing capability? I mean, three D printing has been around for a while now. I mean, it's nothing new. So are our hospitals and clinics going into this? Do we have doctors doing any research or printing devices in house? Do they already have the capability right now, or is this all new to them? Uh, uh, from yeah. my side, I think they have a lot of ideas. Uh, I mean, uh, some of the, the stuff I'm working on with the doctors, they come with their own ideas uh, and stuff. But I think to run a 3D printer itself, the technology is not there yet where you can just like, it's not like Star Trek replicator where you can just press a button and just, boom, you just come up. No, it's not that yeah. you know straightforward yeah. yet. You know, so we, we but, have but, to let But I mean, are, are, are yeah. they playing around with it, doing any kind of R&D in the hospitals itself? Uh, this one, I'm not... I'm not qualified to say because I don't sell the machines. Uh, probably have yeah. to ask the, the, you know, the people who sell the machines. 
Yeah. So, Currently, I, I am not aware of any doctors uh, uh, having their okay. uh, any pre three D printer in the hospital itself. You know? How about you, Nufais? Have you heard of anything like that in the hospital? Because my my wife works in hospitals as well. I've I've never heard of any doctors, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, getting into three D printing. Uh, I, so, I, how about I you? Second, I I second the, the what uh, Mark mentioned just now, but uh, I've been getting messages from doctors on uh, on the field asking where to buy 3D printers. So meaning mm. in term of um, in term of the hospital or the clinic as an institution, as an uh, institution themselves, maybe they maybe not now that they have like a dedicated uh, small department to actually tinker with 3D printer prototyping. But on the individual um, uh, level, perhaps a doctor themselves, yes, because uh, I know few doctors already asking where and how to get uh, the raw material and where to buy and how to print those kind of questions. So maybe we are looking at uh, next two or three weeks, more doctors are actually purchasing <laughs> three printers <laughs> to actually print the people. Uh, do you, do you think after this, you'll see more medical you know, practitioners coming into the 3D printing community and try to initiate their own projects in the hospitals? What do you think? I, I think... 3D print, printing uh, technology uh, to be, you know, uh, let's say FDM, uh, 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 FDM technology that, that most people are using it because the, 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 entry, the price is on the entry level, like they say 800 ringgit, you can get uh, decent printers already. Um, yeah. uh, I think more people will actually, uh, because, because what, what the, what have what the things that have been happening now for the past one month in terms of in terms of how the three printer community has been helping the frontliners printing PPEs and stuff actually has actually it's been an eye opener to everyone lah, especially in the tech scene in you know, the makers communities in 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 the industry itself. So I think to answer your question, yes, <laughs> uh, business will be good. <laughs> so ah, big farm. <laughs> Business will be good lah, but it will be you know, it, it's it's like a learning curve, you know, a hype, you know, going steep, and then it's gonna be uh, on a plateau. But I think now it's like this, <laughs> yeah. Right. So so and, and, to and what your question lah. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, other thing, uh, individuals aside, we've seen a lot of uh, institutions coming on board as well, right? Into the community, we have universities, our colleges. Uh, and a lot of corporates as well have come in and they are also doing what you guys have been doing. Uh, what do you, how do you look at that kind of collaboration? Uh, uh, has it been beneficial to the community and is there a lot of strong collaboration between the individual 3D printing guys and the, and the institutions? Yeah. Um, okay, I can, I can start it. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they oh. I think the, the institu education institution First, they actually first uh, jumping in tailors like with America. Maybe Mark can. Yeah, actually, apart from that, there's a few uh, other universities. Uh, I'm actually actually quite close with uh, uh, one of the lecturer in USIM, University Science. Uh, 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 where is it? It's in Nilai, USIM, uh, basically. So, uh, Doctor Ifwat is uh, heading. One of the lecturers there, uh, and he's put active. I think it's one of the first to to start printing for trying to get uh, universities to help to print stuff. So I think to date, until today, he has produced quite a lot of face shields to send out to the to, to his region site, uh, basically. So yeah, I think um, and also other institutions you can see uh, also follow suit. Uh, even like my my alma mater, uh, Utah, they are also helping. One of the because one of the uh, content innovations is uh, my my junior basically from Utah, uh, still a student there. Um, they probably also help them to you know raise uh, 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 you know start printing a lot of uh, stuff, giving more. I think it's basically in it's it's a good thing that uh, the universities know that oh this is actually yeah interesting technology. Start to maybe push the industry forward maybe. Because you can see that currently institutions, they don't have a 3 printing course, like for example. So probably after this COVID-19 thing, they might shift the attention a little bit. It's like maybe this is a growing field that probably you can do something around this, maybe. Right. Yeah. So we have a relevant question here. That, uh, so Chin Seng Choi is asking, would there be a possible demand, like a boom in 3D, uh, in 3D printing industry, right? After this MCO, 
think that's quite relevant to what you were saying earlier if the institution get on board <laughs> so what, what do you think generally how 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 positive will this be for the community itself and the industry itself okay I for think. me i i would think it is uh uh quite simple okay so uh because i involved very very early on since uh, 2012 right so at that time i still remember when i asked do you know what is 3d printing people say you know those reflective card where you can see 3D images by shifting your heads left and right. So I said, no, 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 no. Those are not 3D printing. No. So, to roughly last year, so they will be exploring like, ha, huh, can 3D printing actually help me? I would like to explore more. You know, after COVID nineteen, I'm pretty sure that is going to be amplified. You know, so it's like, can 3D printing help? Let me try to explore that first before I start looking to other other things. You know, so I think from from that perspective, the industry will boom in that part, lah, basically. <clears throat> right. No face. What do you think? What are your thoughts on this? I think I I think more there will be a a demand in terms of uh, uh in terms of uh, uh one of it is the three printer itself. Uh, the market will be there will be boom, and then there will be more demand, and then uh I think more parents, especially parents who are having uh young kids. Now we are talking about. STEM education, uh, science, technology, and uh, you know, the math. math uh, one of it is people looking at doing uh, coding, uh, web development, things like that. And another side of it is basically makers, you know, involved things like tinkering with electronics uh, and stuff. Uh, just that before this, uh, 3D printing is not uh, being given. I think uh, on my side, not being given more. Exposure lah. So whatever that's been happening now, there will be an eye opener, and more parents will actually uh try to you know expose their uh their kids to 3D printing uh technologies and how how it may help uh the kids learn because basically you can actually design anything and then print it right away. Uh, if you're having it in next in the room, you can have it and then you can hold it on on in your hand. So <laughs> that, that will be. There will be search of demand, lah. I could, I could say that, yeah. In Paris, we can't hear you. Something wrong with your mic. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Uh, was yeah. I mute? <laughs> so, I mean, for <laughs> myself, I never really got into 3D printing myself. But you know, my kids like to build things, so I was actually thinking of getting into 3D printing so that my kids can start designing stuff and printing out things, right? Uh, yeah. This year, <laughs> and then all this happened, so everything is on hold right now. So I'm mm. actually now very much, and after seeing what you guys have been doing, I'm actually more inspired right now, you know, to get my kids involved very early, so that they are very familiar and they're exposed to this technology. I mean, in ten years, I'm I'm sure the you know developments will be much more amazing, right? So yeah. and uh, we have another question which is kind of related as well. Uh, what can the government do to promote, uh, you know, such technologies, technologies like this? Uh, to the public, so not only the to the medical field, but you know generally, I guess. What do you guys think? Do you think that the government can do more, or do you think are they doing enough? Okay, uh, I I think the government can start by introducing this. Uh, uh, I think there are some courses in primary school they touch a little bit slightly on three D printing already. I think if I'm not mistaken, I saw some syllabus. So I think that is a good step in the uh, in the direction of 3D printing, uh, uh, and also I I realized that uh, government is actually trying to push uh, KBT, uh, the the design thinking thing into uh, secondary schools too. So those are all very good directions and to become not just 3D printing. It's like uh, all round maker culture. It's not just 3D printing. You know, it can be laser cutting or anything. So 3D printing is just a tool. You know, so basically. Using knowing how to use a tool, it's just one more advantage that you can have, basically. Yeah, but of course, it doesn't help if uh, government wanted to push, uh, say, uh, specifically uh, try to push three D printing technology by uh, you know having grants for three D printing companies or you know uh, manufacturers or you know different kind of research towards the three D printing side. Obviously, that will be the better lah. That will be what the government on the on the government level can do, basically. Okay, and uh, if let's say now a hospital or clinic or even a non-medical team, right, or even whether it's a government agency or private, 
if they now feel like okay we need to set up a 3d printing team or r&d center to explore this how can you guys help like if they come to your group and then say like hey you guys can help us or not what you guys can do for them okay so uh i'm also actively helping um then the, the, the dentistry field to produce their own surgical guides in some ways i think the dentistry is the one of the pioneering field in terms of using 3d printing for their uh in industry basically so what they do is actually the the dentists themselves they don't quite handle the 3d printing itself they have dental labs so the lab is like a third party uh, uh, a service provider for all sorts of dental related items so they will approach them to say okay i'm gonna get this surgical guide done so can you help me to do it then if it's 3d printing uh, or anything else uh, so basically so typically the dentists themselves they are uh, they are too busy with all their daily life right? they don't have time to play with the equipment and stuff but they have dental lab to help them with all this kind of stuff probably something similar will happen uh, in medical other medical fields for example 3D Gens uh, is another Malaysian company that focuses on the medical portion of uh, 3D printing. So I'm, I'm not an expert to to talk about the medical. Maybe one day you can you know invite 3D Gens people uh, uh, to to talk about this issue. Yeah, yeah. I mean it doesn't have to be specifically medical grade things, but you yeah. know if they just want to start at least exploring, doing some aesthetics, you know their own R and D stuff. So at least right. to help them to set up the basic printer and get them started, right? I'm sure like you guys can do that as well. So what will be the, the basic setup? Like if somebody wants to get into 3D printing now, uh, what will be like the cheapest printer out there or what is the, the easiest way for them to learn? Like, what would you guys suggest? <laughs> no fires, so, we can um, maybe take this. No fires, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I think let's say, uh, let's put a scenario here, right? Uh, let's, let's take, uh, uh, dentistry uh, clinic. So last, I think the pre let's say the previous five years, right? To make uh, uh, an orthodontic models of uh, your jaw and and whatnot, you have to you have to use uh, like a you have to do a X ray proper X ray, and then you have to put in software, and then you have to think uh, in the software before you 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 actually. Uh, last time they used uh, clay mold uh, to actually model your jaw. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. I think I think the the previous two or uh, three two years back, the technology of uh, uh, another technology in three D printing, which is uh, SL, SLA or SLS, they can actually you can actually use resin to uh, to print a model of of human uh, orthodontic profile, and then plan what you want what the what and then the dentist could plan what they want to do. In term of you know because the tangible things is much easier to discuss with with your mate with your uh partners rather than looking at a at a at a three D model in, in inside your monitors. So so one company that I know uh Singapore based but they also operating in Malaysia. Uh, Zenyom Z E uh it says like Zenyom but with Z in front. They basically. Yeah. Yeah, the so, invisible line thing, right? right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so uh, so they are using a three D print three D printer technology to actually uh, create a model of your teeth and then help it to align rather than using a a, a conventional uh, braces. So so I think uh, to answer uh, Imba questions about entry level, entry level uh, FDM la fused deposit uh, uh, material. Uh, a kind of printer like like uh, 800 ringgit 900 ringgit you can get uh, entry level printer so to go to a level where you can actually uh, print something that is uh, high end and use it in uh, in in let's say uh, a dentistry industry is maybe around 2000 ringgit kind of printer so there's a let kind of uh, you know uh, entry level mid level uh, so around two thousand ringgit, you can get a high end, not high end like an entry level SLA, SLS printer, uh, resin based, resin based printer. So the uh just to put into context, uh, the, the 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 printers that most of the com people in the community use now to print face shield PPEs, uh, for in this COVID nineteen is uh FDM printers, which is used uh, which is using 
plastic filament that been melted and then fused using the nozzle and to you know uh, and then print it now and then the other type of printer is basically using uh, uh, resin that has been cured using uh, UV uh, UV rays of uh, laser and then and then been printed out uh, in, in in much more finer quality so there's a uh, so whoever is like, watching us now, you can Google FDM and uh, SLA or SLS. So there's two types of, of, of printers. Yeah. Okay. And uh, okay, uh, Jin posted something. So the building the printer is a hard work. Maybe you can get a snap maker from Cytron. <laughs> so what, what's a snap maker? You guys can uh, explain a bit. I also need to Google. I, I actually out of touch with so many, uh, you know, printer brands out there in the market. You know, it's... Right. So many friends, so many choices. It's good for the okay, community. So, uh, our friends at Cytron, I mean, you guys know <laughs> Cytron is based in Penang. They do a lot of amazing stuff for the Baker community as well. Oh, yes. So I'm, they, I'm, I'm yeah. a happy customer from Cytron too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I guess they have something as well. So, maybe you guys can check out Cytron. Maybe they have some, uh, uh, you know, uh, entry level 3D printers for you. All right. That's interesting. Uh, we have another question here. Uh, can 3D printing be married with 3D hologram technology? Hmm. What do you think? I don't know how that works. Uh, 3D printing with 3D hologram. Uh, I, I'm not sure whether he's trying to mention there's what well, there's uh, this prototype 3D printing method that's uh, kind of uh, you can make it quite instant uh, to turn out something, but it's based on sort of hologram. So it's not okay. really it's not really in production yet. It's still in the R and D uh, where they can cure. A product almost instantly right. so instead of taking okay. like hours or uh you know to print something it becomes like seconds so right. i'm not sure is uh you see you talking about that or is it a different kind of hologram that we you know the one that we, we see so right. not sure <laughs> right so okay so anything else any other interesting uh, developments in the 3d maker community right now from what you have seen in the last one to two months besides whatever you are doing what other interesting things have you seen I think people, local makers, they are printing drones now. Drones. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I know. I know. Uh, the old timers like Mark and Cheng Hua or Jin or Mereka guy or uh, even Cytron, they've been printing uh, this kind of parts of drones, right? But uh, yeah. because now drone technology has become um, uh, uh, like like. More, more access to to ordinary people, and the, in terms of the user friendliness of of the product itself, and 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 a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, like tutorials in in YouTube and in in the internet that people can actually read on. And uh, yeah, I I, I saw uh, I I know there's a group that actually printing drones uh, parts la. They make their own drones and. Uh, RC planes using uh, 3D printers. So that's one of uh, uh, interesting that been happening. Uh, if you, if you ask me, yeah. Mark, how about you? Anything in it's, exciting you've seen? Uh, it's it's everywhere because uh, you know uh, I'm involved in different projects here and there. So I mean I have uh, people or clients uh, try to print uh, 3D printing baits, fishing baits also. Uh, fishing community is uh, quite interesting itself. Uh, they have different kind of bait for different kind of fishes. Now only I know. So they are trying to you know start start creating their own baits and try to sell them. Uh, I also have some people who start to do you know uh, those car collectibles. Uh, it's like those not RC cars, just a model kind of cars. They are doing collections now. No, they no longer just put it as a car. They want to turn it into dioramas. And that is also actually a business already. I think you, you sell those, uh, say, mini tire racks or even mini tires, turn it into a workshop, you know, that kind of stuff. There are people trying to do that for a living too. Um, yeah, I mean, in general, there are a lot of different niche categories, hobbies. They are starting to look in 3 printing and see how they can enhance their own hobby, I would say. Okay, so Jin said you're printing roasted chicken. Is that true? Oh, yes. Uh, if last year, <laughs> if you see on the road, for Kenny Rogers, that's that's what I do <laughs> for them. <laughs> okay, yeah. how about printing food? Because I remember seeing a YouTube video 
uh, someone is printing a plant-based steak, right? And it's 3D printed because they wanted the texture and all that. What do you think about that technology? I mean, that, that looks quite interesting. Uh, you guys have I, seen anything? In, uh, I, I've seen that post quite some time ago, to be honest. I'd say maybe four years back, I think. But I haven't really seen the whole thing take off yet. Um, not as fast as the plant-based, uh, the, the veggie-based meat from Burger King and McDonald's, you know. That is taking off way faster than the 3D printing food. Uh, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure what is the status of uh, 3D printing food in general right now. It would be interesting. So, um, can maybe can for... that be done with the regular 3D printing technology or this uh, entirely different technology? Printing food items. Food item as in chocolate stuff, then yeah, you can just modify a 3D printer to you know, extract chocolate uh, paste and stuff. Same concept, yeah. la, the same concept. Same Instead concept. of using plastic, you use chocolate. <laughs> yeah, <Okay>. exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, but if you talk about say specific uh, food, because those I've seen before are on a research site, would be on say those people who kind of chew, you know, because of their jaw having issues and stuff, they still want to make sure the, the food they eat is not just plain everything just go through like liquid. No, it's not that appetizing. So they're trying to 3D print food with different texture and stuff. Those are specific printers. Yeah, that, that, that is not the standard print, printers that you see. Basically. Okay, so when do you see the prices coming down? Are there common price lists available for public? I guess they're asking about the cost of 3D printers. Oh yeah, it's gone down dramatically, man. So <laughs> okay, put it yeah, this way. So I, I think bought... it's already cheap, yeah. Yeah, I, I bought my first printer back in 2012, right? It's an Ultimaker 1 original, the Ultimaker original. It's made of wood, plywood, and it cost me like 10,000 to get into Malaysia. That is the first Ultimaker ever, like, I guess, in Malaysia. So right now you can get 850 ringgit uh, 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 3D printer that is more reliable than Ultimaker original, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think, okay, so... This question, when do you think uh, metal sintering printers as a service will be available to common people in the Klang Valley? What, what is that? I mean, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> okay, so DMLS are basically, yeah, direct metal laser sintering services. The problem with DMLS is that you need to operate out of a clean room. So okay. unless you want, because uh, metal particles floating in the air is uh, quite combustible. So it need to be operated in a very clean room with but the problem is in Malaysia, we don't have the kind of volume to justify for uh, DMLS services currently. So right. there are actually another way of doing metal parts out of uh, the uh, 3D printers is that you can print using uh, metal base, uh, PLA base, uh, uh, semi conductive base filament that you can pass, that you can put into oven to. Uh, how to say, turn it into a, a real metal part later on. After you print up with some sort of like uh, FDM style, then after that, you can put it into an oven and turn it into a real metal part. It will look nice, but it will get the job done, basically. So, so this uh, is like the one, I've seen someone print a whole Iron Man suit, right? And metal, is that the same technology? Uh, you mean the... This, the one that the commenter was talking about? I think it was uh, Jung. Oh, no. so that one is that one is using real DMLS services. Those okay. are expensive, very expensive. So those are those are the ones that need to be done in a clean room and all, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 So I'm guessing there'll be a very that's only currently has up. maybe one or two. I think I uh, there's one in uh, one of the institutions. I remember, but I, I'm not really familiar because I've never been to one to see it in action before. But it's very expensive to run the thing. We don't have the volume to run. In Malaysia. Yeah. All right. Okay, interesting. And uh, back to what you guys are doing with this uh, fight against COVID-19, right? Uh, yeah. How do you see this uh, PPE shortage, uh, equipment shortage uh, situation, and how long do you think you will have to keep printing and contributing? Or are the government already, you know, have other things? in Because our Prime Minister obviously announced a huge budget increase for the hospitals and all, that they will get their equipments ready. So how, how's that? going are the hospitals already getting their equipments or are you guys foreseeing a longer period of time where you have to uh, continue the support i think i think the the issue now is uh, is not only us that actually uh, uh, demand the use of pp in large numbers e everyone in in the world now especially our neighbors indonesia uh, 
the Philippines, right? I think they are in more in, in, in more of a dire needs of PPE in comparison to in, in terms of numbers lah, than us. So everyone everyone is fighting for the same resource, which is uh, uh ready made PPE coming from China. So uh by saying that, right? Uh uh yes the community have to actually uh try to uh help as much as 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 possible based on our own resources that we have based on the raw materials that 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 we have in the market uh but from from the day one that uh, when we started this uh, initiative we always think that um the solution that we are offering on the table is basically a stopgap measure is a is a, an interim solution uh that once the government uh said that they can restore the logistic uh, uh into a into more an effective way to distribute the pp then perhaps on that particular time maybe the community can back down a little bit uh but we are not seeing that happening now <laughs> because uh three days back uh the DG uh, Nur Hisham uh, said that uh, we have this X amount of days of stock of uh, boots, X amount of days of face shield. So it's quite shocking for me when uh, the DG himself announced this because uh, backtrack two weeks before they said, oh, it's not a problem, it's basically a logistic problem. <laughs> now when he said, oh, we have a shortage, this is our, our stock. So I also pending uh, how to deal with this, right? And uh, I know, I know, uh, MDA, um, the the bodies that are actually dealing with the uh, uh, import export of uh, the PPE supply have been uh, putting uh, a more easier way for enterprises to actually uh, purchase PPEs from uh, other countries, and then uh, and then expedite the process by lifting up few uh, red tapes lah. So I know enterprises also been been. They they've been trying to buy PPE supply from from out of the country. Just that we are not looking at on, on the field itself. From the feedback that we receive from the doctors, the nurses, uh, they are not getting supplies. Al although they said they have supplies, but it's not been distributed fast enough. So, uh, they keep asking. They keep asking us for for facials lah, at least. Or any other PPE like non-woven gowns and things like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm. I think in. I think the communities are on its own still like thinking what's the best way to actually, uh, do, uh, our part and help this. Uh, you know, to to keep the supplies going. Uh, I know that some uh local uh tertiary institution like uh, UITM, uh, EdTech, uh, GMI. Uh, Tati, you see, uh, been they've been uh they've been venturing, not venturing like they already started production of uh PPEs by using their own machines, and then the materials have been contributed by a CSR effort of local companies like Petronas, uh, Highcom, Taxi, and 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 more, right? But uh, uh, we have, I I don't know, in terms of when when we combine all of this effort right but then when we when we ask the frontliners who are actually on the field the there's no uh, you know correlation in terms of uh, by right all of this effort they've been doing should be uh, the supplies is enough lah, but some of the other part of the country they say oh there's still not enough we need this uh, uh, ppe we need this facial can you help supply this uh, you know so we are not uh, so so that's the issue lah. If, if 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 you know what i'm trying to say is whatever effort that we've been doing now perhaps it's already enough but industry like still can't see it you know uh like constant supply of ppe has been been uh been fed through the frontliners so, yeah Barak, your mic is not working okay yeah. Sorry, because I'm trying to do a lot of stuff, so I, I mute myself, then I forget. So Mark, on your side, uh, you, yeah. you guys are printing a more, uh, I would say, a bit more complex stuff. Uh, yeah. Besides face shields, you're working on other kind of devices. So how's that yeah. going? Like, uh, Is there a real need for it? And uh, the doctor's really asking you for it, or you guys are just uh, being prepared 
for the worst. Uh, just share uh, more on that as well. Okay, probably uh, it's similar to what uh, Novais uh, mentioned just now because all the other neighboring countries, or in fact, even the US is uh, you know, having such a large demand of all these kind of uh, medical test kits or even uh, nasal swabs and stuff. Right? So it put pressure on the manufacturers to actually produce enough for everyone, every country in the world right now. So right now we are just trying to see, we are trying to get to prepare uh, in case we need this kind of stuff and uh, you know, the medical personnel, they couldn't get enough supplies from the current suppliers. That's where we step in to, uh, to, to fulfill the needs uh, currently. And and currently, you guys are providing everything for free to the hospitals, right? Or are there uh, any charges on on your side, or for, as, a, as a community? Uh, for 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 most of the uh, stuff, I from coming up from my from from my lab using the arrow chamber and stuff. Those up, uh, I just donated in to the hospitals to try. The nasal swab, they actually wanted to uh, pay uh, in kind because uh, the materials are quite expensive. So they are they are they are willing to say okay I just you know just just get you the equipment and stuff to start printing and try it out. So unless we hit the, the production stage lah, currently just testing stage, I still have some biocompatible resins with me. So it's like I shine fine. It's it's on the house for now. Yeah. Then uh, after that, if they want to say okay, I think we really need this kind of uh, uh, stocks coming in more. Uh, they are willing to you know get more materials for me, biocompatible materials for me. I say sure. That's great for them, basically. Yeah. yeah, because may it cannot be sustainable, right? If you guys keep giving things for free and and right. you have to fork money out on your out of your own pocket, is there any kind of efforts to talk to KKM, uh, for example, to maybe allocate some kind of funding uh, for these three D printing communities? Uh, maybe I could answer that lah. So, uh, since since the earlier weeks, right? Um. We've been in we've been in constant communication with um with mostly precisely uh to be precise uh, because if you remember KJ tweeted right uh YB KJ tweeted about you know how how we could uh, help this uh, makers communities print uh chatting out uh, PPEs or supply for hospital in fighting COVID nineteen so uh, uh some of us some of some of us uh been invited to join the group lah so we have constant communication even until today so for now what we, uh, they've been doing is basically uh, giving the resources uh, to the effort that actually can churn out a much faster result which is uh, uh, injection molding uh, method like uh, the in term, uh, you know uh, on a scale uh, on a scale of comparison injection molding uh, method churning out much faster uh, uh, face shields, uh, if we are talking face shields, uh, rather than uh, uh, 3D printers communities uh, by 10x, uh, you can within within like what two minutes you can you can have uh, uh, three to five uh, face shield frames uh, just by you know injecting plastic into the bowl and then you know it, it, because the scale is 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 on the industry scale already not uh, hobbyist scale. Uh, because uh, uh, three printers are more on hobby, hobbyist, uh, you know, kind of level of machine, so it requires like around what 30, 30 minutes or forty five minutes to print just one uh, frame. So the government actually uh, have been urging uh, uh, enterprises to actually do CSR by donating by contributing uh, raw materials to this uh, institution and start uh, chilling out facials uh we 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 try to we try to brought the idea of oh what if uh, the government can supply uh plastic pla filament uh, uh to the committees and and ask us to print uh but perhaps because the the supply itself of that pla is not that much even in the country uh everyone is looking for it also so uh they said uh we want to concentrate on injection molding first. If there is a need later on, perhaps you can actually supply uh, raw materials in terms of uh, plastic or PLA to the tree printers the community. However, however, in Penang, right? In Penang, uh, Penang Science Cluster, they receive uh, state government uh, funding for uh, for their tree printer community. Oh. 
Uh, yeah, you can. Interesting. Uh, yeah, you can go to uh, Penang Science Cluster Facebook. Uh, they've also been printing face shields from the earlier week. One of the one of the earlier groups uh, that actually uh, joining the effort. So maybe perhaps on a on a state on a on a on a on a, uh, federal government maybe not I think but in terms of state government perhaps they will, they are uh, there will be efforts lah because I know they are also uh, they they they've been also some discussion some of the groups they've been discussion with, with the politicians to actually help you know expedite some process. Uh, yeah, right. Penang state government uh, giving the giving resources to to the three printer community. Yes. Okay, so we got this question: Is it true that some designers told me that some university take design from the group and then claim as their product to the media? What's your comment about that? Uh, I think you know. Uh, but when when the time, uh, okay, frankly speaking, lah, in a time of crisis, uh. Uh, they're also an opportunity, right? Uh, uh, I think, I think, I think best for us as a community as a whole, right? Especially, especially those who have been keep printing from day one and uh, contributing to the frontliners. I think the focus now is to actually uh, uh, try to think what's the best way for us to keep contributing. Uh, I know. I know some of the uh, uh, some of uh, some of the, uh, the 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 people in the, in the community itself try to actually get mileage from this and that, uh, but I think in the internet they are that because the 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 design the design of the facial itself is that is uh, an open source design, uh, uh, creative common design from a Swedish uh, designer, and also uh, other designer as well, right? Uh, and then by by claiming those design as yours is, I think unethical. Uh, and in the internet, there are, there are a lot of examples. Of what's going to happen to 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 anyone who actually put claims on open source project? Uh, uh, the the uh, you know uh, perhaps you get the mileage for that particular moment of time now. Uh, but later on, when people find out, or oh, actually you know, uh, but it's un but if you ask me, it's unethical. Uh, yeah, and I think if perhaps perhaps they might make some adjustment and come up with their own design, then uh, then then they uh, uh, you know then that's okay you know you you tweak a little bit come up with your own design then that's okay. Yeah, but so I I noticed that as well, right? Uh, a lot mm. of people have taken the design and they've improved it. There are many uh, iterations. Uh, so are uh, everyone then contributing it back to the community in an open source format, or are some people claiming it to their own IP? Well, what have you seen so far? I actually lost track how many versions is, is there in the group already. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but uh, for, is it all on your side given of this, back to the is, community? Uh, yeah, what is your guideline for the, like, the fork of the design? Do you, you know, I, I'm not sure what is the current guideline that you have, or you're just pushing one spec, the official ones, or how, how, how does it work? Yeah. No, for us, your, your uh, mic. Uh, mic, oh, okay, yeah. uh, um, uh, In the group, right, we try to push uh, this this particular design, which is coming from a Swedish designer. And then we made some adjustment. Uh, less printing time, less material use. Uh, the loop of the uh, puncher hole, we designed it to be, uh, to, make, to, add, to make it suitable with an Asian hole puncher. So so that's that those are the changes that we made lah. But usually, right, the usual way of uh, uh forking this kind of design, make a tweak is basically contribute it back to the community. So I saw some of our friends in the communities they are putting this the the Malaysian design back in the into the into the public space in a in into into Thingiverse, Thingiverse or Yegi or these are the the GitHubs of uh, the GitHubs of the three printers model uh. So I I saw some three D world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of uh, even our design been printed in in the states in 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 France. So because we because everyone is fighting the same enemy right now, right? So I think yeah. uh, you know putting getting some mileage in terms of uh, 
whose design is this, whose design is that, it's, it's not the best best time, I think. Uh, <laughs> you, should, you should give back to the communities. Uh. Right. So generally, what do you guys think about the, the future of 3D printing now that now everyone's so excited about the technology and people have seen what it can do, right? Previously, maybe it was more, a bit more gimmicky. People didn't realize what are the real world applications. But now when people see that, hey, you can print these things and it can be immediately used uh, in an actual real life situation, uh, more people are excited about the technology. So what do you guys think of the future of 3D printing in Malaysia? Mark, maybe you can take this first. Okay, so personally for me, I've seen the growth of 3D printing in Malaysia since day one. Uh, I, I, I hope that this will be, after this will be like a boost for 3D printing community, the field, uh, the, the industry in general. Uh, but we will never know because uh, a few things that is quite aligned for this community to take, you know, to, to, to catch on is uh, number one, the price of 3D printing is actually quite affordable right now. That's a thousand dollars. You can print almost anything plastics. So that is, I think, is uh, one of the huge catalysts. I mean, compared to the say three years ago, you think you get like three thousand ringgit printed to print something FDM. So I think now is the magical number, less than a thousand ringgit. I say. So I think it's um, it's it's uh, it's a good opportunity for anyone who want to test out this technology right now. Um, yeah, you know, just after MCO or even right now, I think you can just uh, order from Lazada or something. You know, just uh, get one of uh, these printers and just try at least. Uh, it's, it's not as difficult uh, as to, to use as compared to say, five years ago. Yeah, so it's relatively uh, noob free right now la, until you hit the troubleshooting problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On the outside, yeah. no so like how long? Uh, so for you, no how long did it take you to learn this, for example? Like how easy was it for you? to get your first 3D printer and then learn to start printing your own. Okay, this is 3D printing uh, secret. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, usually, right, I think everyone who uh, that ventures into uh, 3D printing uh, and try to print stuff on their own, right, the pace usually, the, the learning curve is very steep. Uh, if you have uh, uh, development background in terms of tech coding and, and stuff, right? It might be uh, easier for you, but I can assure you your first three to three to four months will be, there will be sleepless night la, <laughs> for you <laughs> to, to tinker around, to come up with a good, uh, with a good, uh, uh, you, you, until you'll be able to actually come up with, with a good print. Uh, the usual, the usual hurdles that you're gonna you're gonna face is you are going to print air instead of printing plastic. So you print in, in mid air, and then you are also gonna print uh, Maggie me. <laughs> so uh, uh, this is printing, <laughs> printing jokes lah. Huh? You're gonna print Maggie me, you know, with the and then you and then after you you usually uh, usually three printers model going to take like what uh, one or three two three hours uh, to print. Uh, if the the model is complex, and then usually when you want to go sleep at night, you you kick off the printer and then you go sleep, right? And then the next morning when you when you when you woke up, oh, actually you print Maggie me instead of printing model. So <laughs> there will be three to four months la, for a, a a person from zero to actually uh you know being able to come out uh into the uh, to come out and print a good model. And also another thing is um. Usually, the higher entry level of 3D printers that cost around uh, uh, 2000 and above, right? Usually, it's uh, come up perfect OOB out of box, meaning uh, uh, when you receive the printer uh, from the delivery man, you just plug in your SD card with 3D, print, 3D, 3D model inside, and then you can actually just print a perfect model. But what we are talking now is an entry level model, which is like what Mark said is 850 ringgit. You can get a, a quite a decent entry level, but it requires tweaking and fine tuning. So that tweaking and fine tuning is the 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 time that I mentioned now. If you don't have time to actually uh, tinker, uh, maybe perhaps you could go to the higher price uh, and level of three printers. Yeah. Okay, and 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 the other part of three D printing is obviously the the software, right? You need to design something in 3D before you print. 
So what would you be your recommendation for somebody very new? They just want to explore this technology. Like what kind of software, uh, uh, hopefully free, right? <laughs> software that they can uh, start with. What would you recommend? Uh, you, for, for me, it would be thinkercat.com. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Think again? Cat. Thinkercat, Think okay? Cat, yeah. yeah. Think Even SketchUp, you can. But SketchUp is right. kind of old software. La. Uh, but yeah. you can come up with mm -hmm. a very simple design like circle, square, you know, a cup coaster, cup coaster, things like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, and then for you guys, the advanced one, what are you guys are using? What kind of software do you use? I'm using to Autodesk I'm using... Fusion. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Autodesk Fusion three sixty. Right. Okay. So, so yeah. if if you can you can use it for free if you are if you registered yourself as a uh, uh, students or uh, hobbyists or startups, so you can, yeah, and all startup, you can actually use it for free. So you, there, there's no need to pay for, for the subscription. Yeah. yeah, it's an awesome software. It's uh, quite powerful, I'd say. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so are there any uh, plans to maybe uh, promote 3D printing more in the universities or schools. Uh, any of you guys are involved in any of those kind of initiatives? Or any ideas to do that? Um, currently, I think we can just uh, join the Facebook group and just uh, browse off ideas and stuff. I think recently there are quite a few, uh, like I said, because of the COVID-19 situation, 3D printing becomes like uh, one of the highlights in you know providing PPEs to the frontliners. Yeah it sparked a surge of people trying to you know, join the community and learn what is 3D printing. So I think that's a, that's a good way to get started, I would say. If you have anything wrong, like you say, printing Magini, at least we can troubleshoot together, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, we've gone uh, a bit longer than one hour uh, as we initially planned, but it's been a very interesting chat, so I just continued going on. So maybe we can slowly start to wrap up. So. What are you guys uh, like looking forward to in the next one to two weeks? Uh, any new projects or anything you are working on? Or is it just soldiering on, doing whatever you're doing? Or anything you'd like to share, any initiatives or crowdfunding or whatever that you want to share with the audience? OK, um, on my end, uh, Ching Huat and, and, and uh, also is open source uh, COVID-19 relation group. We are also trying to raise funds for uh, providing facial injection molds. Uh, to, to start really pumping up the quantities to provide not just for um, uh, medical frontliners, we are also looking into other areas, uh, even private, starting to inquire about this, this all this stuff. And we are hitting, like you no know, fire says, we have a filament shortage right now. We can't really get a lot of uh, uh, raw materials to print on. So we are trying to look into getting injection mode. And we have a Kickstarter link, sorry, uh, a pitch in link uh, regarding this, uh, this, this initiative. Maybe for those who is in the live stream, who want to support our course, you can actually just donate to the call to do the PGE. Yeah. All right, and this is the this is the hundred k high grade reusable face shields, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the project. So I will just share the link here. So if you guys are interested, you can uh, check out the link here. Uh, on a There's a crowdfunding page on Pitchin. I will share the link in the comment page as well. Uh, and uh, Norfais, on your side, any updates? Um, with, so so in, in the, in, uh, while at the same time, I, I try to actually uh, keep providing uh, like a, like a constant uh, encouragement la, for the community. If you have resources, please print. But if you uh, no longer have resources in your hand, that's fine. That, that's OK, because I know everyone been putting their time, their uh, savings uh, to, the, to, to, the, to, to the cause that we've been you know, doing for the past three, four weeks. Uh, I'm, I'm very thankful. Especially to to to, to everyone, uh, very uh, uh, you know they, they don't ask for for anything. They just you know print and try to contribute as much as possible. 
So I think for the next one or two weeks, what I've been, what I'm gonna do for the groups, right? Just to try to facilitate the process because uh, there've been a constant numbers of people that keep coming in day by day that actually just found out about this uh, effort, and they also have three printers at home. So I try to actually facilitate them to to how to print, where to send, uh, those facials, those uh, other PPEs that you 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 print it. Uh, you know, try to facilitate the process. That's one. Another one. Uh, secondly, is uh, I've been in. I try to 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 be in communication with with many um local uh enterprises that actually have injection molding machines to help them uh to on to help them on board on this course as well by connecting them to to uh, relevant. Uh, parties, uh, parties such as those companies that providing raw materials, uh, that are willing to do CSR, and I try to connect uh those companies with these uh uh local injection molding enterprises. Perhaps you guys could also you know join hand and then print the facial as well. So that that is what um I've I've been doing uh, for for now. Um, uh, and 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 thirdly, I I um. Uh, I try to consolidate uh, all the all all the efforts that that the group have been doing into a a a, a very uh, finely written documentation, so that uh, you know if this thing happen in the near future, perhaps uh, you know uh, this could be or or perhaps we just want to have a look back what have been what have been done, right? So we have a a fine uh, like more like a documentation. What happened sort of like a gui- guideline on how to do right. this, right? Yeah, right. yeah. Right. Mm. Uh, it, is there yeah. are there people from like other countries, for example, asking you guys for help to with something like this to provide uh, guidelines or sorts? Not, uh, not officially, but I I saw some of the group members been helping uh, other people in other countries as well in the Philippines, in Singapore, uh, and even in states. So. Because because how the group because I I I <clears throat> for the groups right I never put any like a like a hierarch hierarchical you know uh, you have to do asking for permission or whatnot so I I just say if you want to do it just do it uh but but to answer your question yes uh, some of the our group members have been facilitating uh, the similar effort in 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 neighboring countries as well yes yeah I'm sure they'll be very useful. Because I mean, you guys have obviously taken some time to put things together to come up yeah. with some really great solutions. So if it's in a manual format, like a guideline, other people can probably you know quickly yeah. get on it instead of wasting time trying to research again from the scratch. So I guess right. that'll be very useful to a lot of people out there. Uh, yeah. So yeah, thank you for that. I think that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, right. I think uh, I mean to me personally, it's always amazing you know to see people coming together. Uh, and doing incredible things, right? As a community, I've been a community builder for more than a decade now, uh, building tech communities and all kinds of different, uh, uh, not only on the tech side, even non-tech side, right? I've built different kind of communities. So as a community builder, it always makes me very uh, happy to see people coming together. I mean, on one side, you know, as entrepreneurs, we compete, as techies, we compete uh, on various uh, platforms, but when at a situation like this, it's nice to see everyone coming together, people from different levels, uh, to do something great uh, to fight COVID-19. So I would like to thank you guys for all your efforts. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of the audience uh, who are watching right now are also very thankful for the efforts that you guys have been doing. And uh, I'll be sharing all the links on the on the comment section uh, to your groups and also people who are interested. They can join your group and they can also probably reach out to you directly. Uh, and hopefully they can learn more about what's going on. Uh, yeah. Right, so thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, great chat. chat, right? And uh, keep uh, fighting the good fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, as a as a closing note, I think uh, thanks for Imbaraj for inviting us for this uh, live uh, live chat, and also thanks to uh, uh, all the volunteers who is uh, involved in this project, uh, and also to you, Novais, and us especially to the KKM people. I mean, without these people, we would have like, you know, get really really serious. So. Let's 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 just get Malaysia out of this uh, and you know recover as soon as possible. I guess. Yeah. All right. Hey guys, thank you so much. Thanks, everyone.
Good okay, night. Have thanks. Good night. Yeah. yeah. Happy weekend. Bye bye. Right. Okay, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we've had uh, Norfais and Mark from the three D printing community sharing with us their initiatives and uh, everything they've been doing uh, to help support our frontliners uh, during this uh, COVID period. Uh, they've been printing face shields. They've been printing uh, masks. They've been printing uh, uh, other devices, medical devices, breathing devices. So it's amazing to see uh, the kind of effort that the community has put together. And most of them are spending their own money coming out uh, with their own resources to, to do this. So if you're interested, uh, do learn about the communities. I'll be sharing all the links on the comments to their groups. Uh, go check out these 3D printing groups and see the kind of work they're doing. Uh, and if you can support them in any way, uh, whether you know with the uh, funding or other kind of support resources, or if you can, you know, uh, help them to make connections, anything, any kind of support, I'm sure they'll be very, uh, very help. Uh, it'll be very helpful, and they'll be very grateful as well. So thank you so much for tuning in uh, to another session, uh, late show with Inbraj, which I've been doing uh, mainly because I'm a bit bored at night uh, because uh, you know, uh, being locked up, nothing much to do. Work aside, we also need to uh, keep busy with other things. So. I hope this uh, live session has been useful to you guys and uh, I hope to invite more interesting people and have a chat with them so that we all can learn new things during this uh, lockdown period. Uh, so from me as a moderator of Open Coffee Club KL, thank you so much for joining. Hope to see you in another session. Bye-bye. <laughs>